Now, the success of React comes down to four key things. And these React concepts are what we're going to go over in the next four videos. But in this one, let's talk about the first one. And the first one, React says, hey, don't touch the DOM, I'll do it. What do I mean by this? You see, many existing frameworks and libraries before React were directly manipulating this DOM on every page. First, let's just go over what a DOM is. If you remember, DOM is our document object model. It's what the browser uses to display, well, a website or a web app. And JavaScript is simply manipulating this DOM. That's all JavaScript is doing. For example, if I right click over here and select inspect, you'll see that here, if I click on unvote, we'll get a little flash saying that, hey, JavaScript just updated this. If I click again, again, I get a little flash. The DOM is just the tree representation of the page. We start all the way up from the HTML tag, all the way down to the body through each individual elements. And websites were built using things like this. All these ways that browsers allowed us to manipulate the DOM. They gave us the DOM API that we could access using something like inner HTML or get element by ID, get elements by tag name. This API allowed us to traverse the DOM, access any node we wanted to, maybe remove them, add new nodes. And before React, this is what libraries did. You either did this manually or you used jQuery or you use some sort of a library that allowed you to use this in a simple fashion. You see, this way of programming was called imperative. That is, in an imperative paradigm, you directly change individual parts of your app in response to various user events. So you had, let's say, your JavaScript file. You'd say, hey, if user is logged in, well, then go change that little icon over here to the user's profile. And now that the user is logged in, well, also show profile page, okay? So JavaScript goes, changes the DOM, and updates the profile page. And then, okay, now that we have, we're also logged in, we also need to display friends. Okay, let's do that as well, modify the DOM. And all right, that's good, we're good. Oh, by the way, it's been five seconds, and we need to display a chat over here. Okay, I'm going to go and do that. Now, this sounds intuitive, but the problem with this imperative approach is that it becomes difficult to see the relationships between events and all these edge cases. Remember this diagram over here where we had AngularJS that all of a sudden had all these relationships affecting each other and all these arrows pointing to different things? Well, instead of this imperative approach, React came up with a novel concept a more declarative approach. And this is what React says to you. Hey, DOM manipulation is one of the biggest performance bottlenecks. It takes a long time for DOM changes to happen. The browser has to do two really intensive operations. One is to repaint, that is change an element and add it onto a page. And then reflow, which is to recalculate the layout of the page and move things around if need be. So changing the DOM was a really expensive operation. So React says, hey, you know what? Let me take care of that. I'll find the best way for me to change the DOM and just declare to me what your app looks like. So all we need to do is say, hey, this is a JavaScript object of how I want the app to look. And React is going to hold this JavaScript object this massive, massive blueprint of how things should look. And based on this blueprint that we give it, well, React just says, hey, just tell me what the page should look like and I'll take care of it. I'll do everything for you. I'll find the best way to use the DOM. You're never going to touch the DOM. Just tell me what the page should look like. This declarative paradigm is called that because we declare that, hey, this is what the state or data 
of our app should be like. And based on this state, well, then just make those changes. So if user is logged in, then React already knows exactly what to update and what to do. Now, this idea of a declarative style meant that we didn't have to directly say, do this, and if this happens, then do that, where we just say one by one exactly what should happen. Instead, we tell it, this is the state of our app. And React automatically just does it for us. The difference is that all the different states are accounted for in one place. That is one big JavaScript object that describes how our app should look. And this resulted in less complexity, better code quality, and faster developer times. So it created this whole idea of, hey, you can build web interfaces without touching the DOM. And this is where the name React came from. The name React is simply saying, hey, based on whatever the state or data of the app is that describes our app, I'm just going to react to it and change everything for you so that you get the display that you want. 